what does it feel like, Mr. Julian, being the loudest and proudest voice on an issue that affects Canada's history by possibly ending it in terms of merging us in significant ways with, Can with America and Mexico? So how do you feel being the loudest voice? Because I think you were the first visible Canadian politician that I've seen to make an issue of the SPP. Well, it was actually Jack Layton. He yeah. was the first person to make the make it an issue. Right. And uh, I feel very supported because all 30 of my caucus colleagues federally are very supportive. We've, right. we've uh, seen support from New Democrats right across the country. Right. And it's particularly the public, I think, that's, that's most interesting because people come into some of these meetings, uh, we'll have 100, 200, 300, 400 people out. And they, they come in, a lot of them will know about the SPP, a lot of them won't know much, but at the end of the evening, I've never had any Anybody say, well, so what? Everybody is concerned. You have people galvanized. They're getting out there. They're getting petitions uh, signed. They're, they're writing letters. They're writing emails. What they're saying is Canada counts for them, and they're not going to let this country go down without a fight. That makes me proud to be a Canadian, to know that there are thousands of Canadians concerned about this issue. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Dooley, you spoke on this issue a number of times for our CKLN listeners. What have you found to be the most convincing arguments in terms of explaining to people what the SPP is and why they should think it's important? People are concerned about the, the complete lack of any democratic oversight, that this is done behind closed doors because they know the public doesn't support the agenda. People are concerned about what this means for drug safety and food safety in Canada, for transportation safety. So they're concerned about the kind of measures that we take to protect our families being eroded, in many cases destroyed, by this agenda. And they're concerned about what it means for the environment. When we talk about water exports or water diversions, they're concerned about what this means for the future of our energy sovereignty in Canada. So there's a whole variety of issues that, that people raise, and it's not the same for any one individual. Uh, some, that's why we have the 10 points, because some people respond to one point uh, more, uh, more heavily than they'll respond to another. We get the 10 points out there, and then we let the public make the decision about which issue they're most concerned about. No, absolutely, Mr. Julian. Thank you for, for the 10 points, um, which is great. I think that was incredible stuff, your speech, where you really, really broke down how dangerous the SPP is for, for our sovereignty, ours, America's, and Mexico's, because it's being done in secret. Why do you think that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton are willing to mention NAFTA? But Obama just recently, ABC News reported, said that he saw no evidence of a North American Union, and all that talk of, of deep integration was ginned up by blogs and the Internet. So why do you think they'll talk about NAFTA, but they won't talk about about the SPP, uh, the latest version or the sequel to NAFTA that's coming 15 years later. Well, there's a difference between the SPP and the North American Union. And so uh, you have to distinguish between the two. We, we actually have an anti-SPP uh, petition that is being signed on now uh, as, we, as we speak by members of the House of Representatives in the U.S. Congress. So we're finding members of Congress signing on to halt the SPP process. Now, the SPP is what I mentioned tonight, the, the 10 points, the changes in three to 400 areas that are being negotiated behind closed doors. The North American Union, it's more of a concept uh, from right-wing Americans. Involves uh, a, a Mero and uh, a NAFTA superhighway systems. And we've, we're, of course, checking to, to see if there's any evidence of that from the documentation. We've seen no evidence of that so far. So I'd make a distinction between the SPP, deep integration, and the North American Union that is something that's uh, pushed forward by the, the right in the United States. I don't see any evidence uh, for a lot of their claims. Do you see why people are concerned, especially where the, the aspects of the SPP, even on SPP, gov uh, list a lot of things but don't expressly list military integration which apparently was recently announced by the National yeah. Post Can West News Service David Pugliese uh, a couple of weeks ago yes yeah and, and here's an example right of a document that was signed in secret by the Canadian government uh, national defense and the Canadian government did not make it available to Canadians it was because the US Army leaked it on their website and it was picked up by uh, Canadian media that this was became known to Canadians I mean this is the kind of absurd decision that is taking place. The Canadian government saying that they will allow American troops under U.S. military command into Canada under certain circumstances uh, is, is something that should be part of the democratic debate. And, and yet, the uh, Stephen Harper government, as the Paul Martin liberal government did before him, is doing this negotiating behind closed doors. Unbelievable. Uh, Mr. Julian, with respect to, to military integration uh, and, 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 and further and final integration, what are the biggest things Canadians need to do right now to stop the SPP? You've spoken on this across the country, so you've both spoken out and explained it clearly and received uh, extremely uh, positive feedback for your efforts. What do Canadians need to do right now to stop or, or investigate or whatever you prefer the SPP? 
they need to get active. They, they need to, the, we have petitions that we're distributing, we're presenting them all every day in the, in the House of Commons. And we, we need to make sure that people get active by writing emails, writing to the local member of parliament, writing to the media and asking the media why they're not covering it. We've got some notable exceptions. Uh, independent journalists are doing a great job, so are local journalists. We need the national media to weigh in on this issue. And they need to get galvanized politically. The next election campaign is going to be a very important campaign for Canada's history. And the NDP is running in all 308 ridings of the country. We're the only party, aside from the Conservative Party, that is running everywhere. And we're saying to Canadians, if you vote for us, we will stop the SPP. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Julian. Thank you. Nice to speak Cheers. to you. Absolutely. Yeah, Thanks for all your good work. Nice. Thank you. By the way. <clears throat> well, there you have it. Uh, that was uh, Mr. Peter Julian speaking about the SPP. Seems like a very nice guy, a very knowledgeable guy. Um, in his position as a member of the NDP, I kind of look at it as similar to uh, Ron Paul's position as a Republican, where if he still wants to work with other members of his party and convince other members of his party to take on this issue with as much vigor as he is, then uh, he's got to be diplomatic about what they've done. But the Speaker of the Manitoba Legislature did call for NAFTA Superhighway. Gary Dewar, Premier of Manitoba, is, according to Victor Fletcher, the Toronto Street News, issuing NAFTA driver's license that allowed drivers to go from Mexico to America to Canada. Uh, with the same driver's license, so no security issues there, no border checks. So there are certain things, and, and, and the one th reason I want to ask him specific questions about these issues is to wonder if this is a delaying process that will simply delay investigations of this until 2010 when it's over, or is this in fact uh, a serious uh, attempt uh, with some restrictions and natural limitations on actually trying to stop the SPP. Regardless, this is BK reporting for CKLN Radio, Toronto Street News, White Buffalo Films, Toronto Change, and Press for Truth. Peace out. <laughs>